Let me tell you something. There is no chance that Daniel Jones is going to be successful going up against the star that is Chase Young and the best defensive line in the NFL. This after a Washington loss with the Giants' terrible offensive line. And Saquon isn't close to 100%. And do you realize Daniel Jones has more fumbles in his career than games played? More fumbles, 30, than games played, 28. Think about that. I know Daniel Jones is 4-0 against Washington, but he's 4-19 in his career against everyone else. And trust me, Washington is very much aware of those stats as well. I think the football team smashes the Giants tomorrow because Daniel Jones cannot hold on to the football. The joy and jubilation Colts fans had when the team traded for Carson Wentz. Heck, I love the deal. Feels like a lifetime ago. It's kind of impossible to think or feel anything positive about Wentz and the Colts after that here we go again awful training camp which certainly bled into a week one loss to the Seahawks in a very spotty performance from the quarterback. Wentz looked like he barely practiced this summer in that aforementioned loss and that makes sense because you know he barely practiced this summer thanks to foot surgery and he was on the COVID list and there was no difference from the disastrous 2020 season in Philly and last week when he was making his debut in a Colts uniform. No reason to believe that he's going to be successful against Aaron Donald and the Big Bad Rams this week. And if you actually listen closely, you can hear Aaron Donald laughing, studying the Colts and Wentz film. This feels like a bloodbath. Rams defense is going to rock Carson Wentz and the Colts. You know, we talked all summer about it. This Colts schedule is brutal. I would not be shocked to see Indianapolis start the season 0-5. And you got to remember, there's a period of time Colts fans were dreaming about a Matthew Stafford trade. He goes to the Rams. He dominates week one. Stafford's going to lead the Rams to the Super Bowl. And Carson Wentz is going to continue to struggle mightily for Indy. What an absolute mess. We are thrilled to be joined by CBS NFL analyst and our great friend, Amy Trask. Amy, what a thrilling win for the Raiders on Monday Night Football in front of a sold-out crowd in Vegas. What was your reaction to the scene on Monday night? Well, you used a terrific word, Adam, thrilling. Uh, As I've shared with you many times and as I've shared with everyone many times, Raider fans will forever have a very, very special place in my heart. So So to see them as exhilarated as they were really thrilled me i'm happy for them Uh, it was tremendous and and by the way to see our big three co-founder ice cube performing with too short was also terrific the whole thing was unbelievable and the raiders getting the win in the fashion they got the win amy it was kind of a big deal so how do the raiders in your opinion carry that momentum can they carry that momentum into the road matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh on CBS on Sunday? Terrific question, and that's going to be a very telling game about both teams. As you know, the Raiders went into the season with a thoroughly revamped offensive line, and then in this first game of the season, lost a starting guard. So now they've got a revamped line with a backup offensive guard going into this game. And it's going to be very, very telling. They're going up against a Pittsburgh team. Uh, The Steelers held Buffalo to 16 points. They sacked Josh Allen, I believe it was three times. So when the Raiders get up to that line of scrimmage, it's going to be, where's TJ Watt? Where's Minka Fitzpatrick? And we'll see how the Raider revamped offensive line, what kind of pass protection they're able to put up against the Steelers. Do they have to leave tight ends in to block? Do they have to add it back to chip? That's going to be um, very telling. I think the line of scrimmage will, in this game, as in most games, dictate outcome. Uh, I think you nailed it. Yeah, that's going to be everything for the Raiders matchup-wise. On the road in Pittsburgh against T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, and company. We've got a marquee matchup Sunday, 425 on CBS, with the Cowboys 
visiting Justin Herbert and the Chargers should be a sensational ball game. Amy, who's got the edge in this one? First of all, can we just take a moment? I actually get to participate for the first time ever in who's got the edge. I mean, this is a big moment for me, Adam. So thank you, uh, not only for having me on your show, but for allowing me to participate in Who's Got the Edge. You're absolutely right. A very, very intriguing game. And it's the kind of game where I think we shouldn't look so much as who loses as who wins. These are exciting teams. These are intriguing teams. Offensively, both teams, terrific. Two terrific quarterbacks. I do, however, think... The Chargers have the edge on defense. They held Washington last week to 259 yards. We'll find out this week whether that was more about the Chargers' defense or more about Washington's offense. But I do think in this game, the Chargers have the edge on defense. I can't wait for it. This is going to be an absolute show in Southern California. Amy, I'm curious to get your take on the Saints. The Jameis Winston-Sean Payton combination, does it have a chance, especially after what you saw last week, to be really special this upcoming season? Look, I think any quarterback has a chance to be special under Sean Payton. Sean Payton does what the best coaches do. He best positions his players to be their best. He doesn't look to cram any player, let alone a quarterback, into a scheme he looks to design around the player and so i do think they have a chance to be special and i attribute that to sean payton and his coaching i think anyone has a better chance under a coach like sean payton than under other coaches yeah he's an absolute gem no question about it sunny skies ahead against the miami dolphins i think that it's going to be brilliant sunshine for Buffalo. Buffalo is absolutely going to bounce back. Josh Allen's going to play at his MVP form. I think that anyone who's concerned about Buffalo is just not paying attention. Josh Allen is too great in general. Specifically, he's too great against Miami. I mean, look at those nuggets of domination when you see what Josh Allen has done in his career against the Miami Dolphins. I think that Allen's going to bounce back. I think Diggs is going to have a huge game. And I think that, really, in terms of where Buffalo is going to shine and where they're going to be sunny skies in the forecast, the defense. I mean, Tua Tagovailoa won, and Tua had that great drive to start the second half for Miami to give the Dolphins a lead, and I don't want to poo-poo that. Will Fuller is going to make his Miami debut after he was suspended for week number one, and Waddle had a big first game for, for Tua, but Tua was pretty good at best, truly okay. He was fine. I think the Buffalo defense is going to win this game for the Buffalo Bills. I think that Sean McDermott got everyone's attention after that debacle blowing a 10-0 lead at home to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Washington putting Ryan Fitzpatrick on IR is a blessing in disguise. Fitz can't play. Taylor Heineke is an upgrade. He's a spark plug. He played well off the bench in week one when Fitz got hurt. On the heels of nearly beating the Bucs, remember last year in the wildcard round of the playoffs. I've never been a Fitz guy, too much Fitz tragic. That's why Fitz keeps bouncing around and why I truly dislike the Fitzpatrick signing in the offseason. Look, Heineke is in a position, in a spot to succeed with Terry McLaurin at receiver, Antonio Gibson running the rock, and there's no chance Gibson fumbles twice like he did against the Chargers. And Heineke is going to outperform Daniel Jones who was terrible again against the Denver Broncos. Poor Zach Wilson. Poor, poor, poor Zach Wilson. It's bad enough to be a rookie quarterback against Bill Belichick. And now you're a rookie quarterback in your first home start going up against a salty Patriots team following a brutal loss where they fumbled away against Miami and lost by a point. I mean, Wilson had enough issues against the Carolina Panthers. I mean, you look at history and you look at this board. My goodness, Zach Wilson is dead on arrival.
Look at these nuggets of domination, Belichick against neophyte quarterbacks. I mean, they complete half their passes against the Patriots. Look at that insane touchdown to interception ratio. My goodness. Mac Jones has such a luxury of playing for Belichick and not against him, and I know it was in a loss, so it didn't get the proper pub or perspective, but I thought my guy, Mr. Mac Jones, played really well against Miami. The numbers, the feel, very strong, and he certainly didn't look like a first-time quarterback when you looked at him last week. Here are the numbers on your screen. I mean, this is kind of flawless, and he did it against Miami. And Brian Flores, who is a great defensive coach, and that Miami D is legit. Mac Jones is going to feel like he's playing in his backyard when he's playing in New York. I mean, the Jets have no talents. At the end of the day, Wilson is going to join the long line of rookie quarterbacks to be dazed and confused by the mastermind. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.